Welcome everybody to Project Upcycle. My name is Leah and I am your moderator today. Now in honor of Earth Day, we are sharing eco-friendly craft ideas all week long. I want to make sure that you download your free patterns. Go ahead and click the link in the description. And then once you get to the patterns page, you'll need to click the picture of the project it is that you would like to download. Now, a couple little hints. I know that some people have been having a little bit of trouble downloading their free patterns. So if you find yourself to be one of those people, some of the things that have been helping our viewers is to open the link in a different browser or perhaps in a private browser. So incognito mode or your private browser of choice. And sometimes that is fixing the issue with getting those free downloads. So give those things a try and also take a peek in the chat box. Our team does drop the link there as well. Sometimes it helps to just open it from a different link. So hopefully you'll be able to get these projects downloaded. And if you have any questions for today's project, please leave your comments in the blue chat box. So that'll either be below your video if you're watching on the website, or you can use the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to keep an eye on any questions that come in about today's project and get those to our Instagram. Instructor. But even if you have some more general questions or just want to let us know where it is that you're viewing from, you can leave those in as well. We get to some more general questions at the end of the demonstration if we have time. Now, every day this week, we've got a new instructor with us streaming live, providing step-by-step -step demonstrations of all of these DIY repurposed crafts. And today, we've got Mr. Domestic with us. So I would like to say hi to Matthew. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'd like you to start by just telling us a little bit about you and the project that you're bringing and demonstrating with us today. Hello, everyone on the interweb. My name is Matthew of Mr. Domestic. Most people know me as Mr. Domestic. So if you forget my first name, that's totally okay with me. And I live in the Pacific Northwest with my spouse and our almost nine-year-old daughter and our one-year-old Australian Labradoodle, who is amazing. <laughs> and coming up here right before my, my daughter was born, um, we, me and my spouse adopted her at birth. And shortly after she was born, my spouse remembered that I always wanted to sew, like with my mom, but my mom wouldn't sew with me because I was a, a boy, so... She was waiting for my sisters to, and my spouse remembered that. Like after a decade, my spouse remembered that. So they bought me a couple sewing classes, and then it just, like, I was off to the races. It's like whatever was the barrier to me doing it, combined with my daughter as my muse and inspiration for literally everything, wow, the quality of what I was able to do blew me away. And eight years later... Look at this. I'm on Craftsy. I'm teaching. Like, I know stuff. I'm actually really good at what I do. And that's so cool. And that's really just the power. One, I'll talk about my daughter a lot in this. But it's the power of that love component of making stuff that I always heard people talk about, but I didn't really understand it until I started making stuff for people. That as you're creating, like the love you feel for that person, it gets trapped in there. I really wholeheartedly think that's unique to the handmade space is whatever energy you have, whatever emotion you have, it's going to get trapped in there, like as a memory. So I always try to like have a joy filled experience from start to finish because I want nothing but joy and love in my projects if I do choose to give them to anyone. And so one tip, if you've never heard it, from me to may, make sure that you will achieve joy at any part of the process is something that I call the 95% rule. Uh, I am not a perfectionist. I don't have enough hours in the day for as much as I do to be perfect at it. I am totally fine at 95% perfection. That's still an A and like it might even be an A plus depending on the teacher. I'm cool with that. Because I want to have fun. I'm not making stuff to present and show places. I'm not painting the Sistine Chapel. I'm just making cool stuff. And even if there are a couple design flaws in it, whatever you made it is awesome. So that's super important there. And oh, I'm in Washington. 
Uh, I won't get any more specific than that, um, <laughs> but that's why I am in the Pacific Northwest. So one additional thing that handmade items have when you upcycle, like this was all ties. I'll show this to you here, is that there's a history to the garment. Mm -hmm. There's a history to it, whether you get it at a a yard sale or an estate sale, or it's something that you have and repurpose. Like there are those memories that come with whatever that history is. And with this, these were my ties, not like drinking my ties. <laughs> and um, yeah, I never want to wear a necktie ever again in my life at 46. So I just decided to do this. And that, that is the history of this. This is my, two decades of wearing neckties and my career right in a pillow. So that history is there. It's been mostly great memories, but that's, what's really cool because you can make a keepsake for someone. I sent a couple of Helena's, that's the name of my daughter, her dresses to someone who made a bear with them. They were like her dresses when she was a baby. So there wasn't much fabric, but I got it back. And it's like, not only is it like a cool bear, but it's like, oh, that was my baby when she was like one and two years old. I can't believe it. So that's just a unique, cool aspect. In addition to not creating more waste and causing more harm to this amazing planet that we've been gifted to live on. And so I definitely am Mr. Domestic and committed to wanting to do more, whatever it is, whether it's upcycling or changing my packaging to recycled um, or compostable packaging. There's a lot of different ways that you can think about doing, doing something to help out this, this globe. I'm curious, everyone, if y'all have anything that y'all are doing. Um, then I can steal your ideas because I love it. Y'all are probably more innovative than me to come up with ideas, but just things that you might have changed or implemented in your crafting and sewing experience that is taking a little of the burden off of the globe, whether it's upcycling, finding a way to not need something. I'd love to see those in the comments. That would be super awesome. But until yes. I see those, yeah, what? what's up? Oh, I was just agreeing with you. That would be fantastic to see some of your ideas. And like you said, things you don't need. What are you eliminating perhaps from uh, your toolbox, so to speak, uh, trying to eliminate a little bit of waste here? And honestly, now that we're like side to side, let's gab about this a little bit, honestly, because that's something that's something also not unique. Everyone, every, whatever you do, whatever your niche that, that um, mm -hmm. you have fun doing, there are so many products out there. Yes. so many and it's yes. like it's gotten crazy to where i've had offers to put out stuff but i'm like why like i don't need to do that like i'm good there's stuff already out there but that's what i've taken stock and stuff in my room i'm really really thinking before i purchase something and I'm a big, whether i need it yeah like, have you I'm, done a stuff big, like that? I'm a big organizer i like all of my things to be organized and there are a lot of products out there that you can purchase to organize, but I'm finding there are a lot of things that I already own that I can organize with and achieve a similar result. And it's it's really been helpful for me to try and, and get a little creative with that. Um, we've got uh, one of our viewers just dropped in, Gail said doggy blankets from old jeans and cords. So pretty much anything that you have that you could repurpose for something like that, give give an item a new life. I love this. I love the idea of repurposing stuff that you have to organize. Um, because as much as I would love the aesthetic of going to the con to container store and like home editing everything to where there's a container for every piece of cereal, like that's not the, the most ecological thing to do. So yeah, just finding things around, even if it's like a cardboard box, I've taken some like sticky wall wallpaper and like just decorated it and it becomes like a storage item. Like that's super fun. And it's a, it's a craft experience for me and my Old daughter. Old shoe boxes. That's what you need. They fit everywhere. <laughs> I can show you, I have a good box right there. There are some good boxes. You know, when you have a good box that you have to keep the box, there's one right here. So I keep those good boxes. And now I'm like, I can make stuff with these good boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have you idea. Got I got like the crate things you get at um, like Costco. That's mm -hmm. perfect size for a dog bed. So somehow I'm going to convert that and turn that into a throne for my kid. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love dog it. Kid, not my human kid. <laughs> oh, 
I'm going to keep an eye on comments as they come in. We've got a couple hellos as well already. Ramona from Texas, uh, Mary from South Carolina. Uh, it looks like we've got Connie in Arkansas. Somewhere I saw that we've got the UK. Hey, there it is, Bahrain. Jackie from Bahrain. the South. Hi. Of <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Hi. And Yasri from Bahrain. So lots of people from lots of places around the yeah. world here. Let us know how it is that you are repurposing, reusing. And then I know specifically today's project uh, has to do with, I think, something we all have a lot of in our closets, which are some ties. Ties. <laughs> Look at that transition. It's like she's a pro at it. Yeah, I had a whole Smooth. bunch of love ties. And when <laughs> I first said yes to doing this, I thought that I was going to do a weaving project. That's honestly what I thought I was going to do because I always wanted to like weave the ties because it's like strips already made. But I didn't have enough of the state of the color and I wanted to make mm. sure that it looked cute. So I decided to open it up and boy, did that blow me away when I saw how much fabric that one tie has. And so I just want to show that part and we can stay in the double unless you don't want to um, like have to smile and stuff. Then you can go to this thing. Oh. <laughs> I understand. So let me get some snips right here. And I'm going to come in close because I'm about that. So oh, if yes. you've never seen a tie, this is a tie. It goes like this and you wear it and like allegedly it makes you more professional and stuff. But the back, there are just a couple places that you need to snip right here. There's like this, which is like a tag. And then so you just snip it like that and then it opens. And the the stitches, ooh, that, that lighting is not good for the dimensions of my face. I'm gonna get back a little bit. Um, then the, the stitches, they're like wide stitches, like a half inch or something. So you can just pull the threads out. But let me continue. They all have these tags in them. And there's not a lot of thread, not a lot of stitching in them. To bulk it. And then this right here. Uh, uh. See, I just yanked it out. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I got the guns. <laughs> and then there's one more tag at the other side like here and I'm excited for y'all to be amazed at how much fabric's in this and then see like there's a you can't see the thread you see it boop and then it's I'm just little, yeah. it just came out look the whole thing Ooh. Like so it's real easy to take apart. And I learned this the hard way. The first one, like, I, it didn't work out for me. But this way, it's like you have extra stuff. And then I'm just ripping it. Which you can do because the stitches are kind of weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're those, like, haute couture stitches or whatever. <laughs> and then let me just press this real quick with my iron. Yeah, I'm using a cordless iron. I've gone back to my cordless iron. I ordered one and got it because I don't have space for a cord. Anyone is curious. It's a Power XL. I love it. Like I got it on the internet. I don't even know where, but it's nice to not need to, to deal with a cord. Uh, Matthew, are there any specific uh, materials of the ties that people should look out for though if they're ironing them that they should avoid using? I mean, you want to follow the settings on the iron. Okay. So they, these are silk, right? So this is not mm -hmm. this is not a high heat, high steam moment by any mm -hmm. means. You want to definitely follow that. But like, I mean, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't care. I would think if there was like varying fabrics or like textiles that the, that the things were made of, that would make it really cool. Like it would just add another level. So I wouldn't mind that so much. Well, this we have a lot of people that are mentioning that they have quite a collection of ties. Yeah. So this is going to be a great project. Uh, looking forward to making a pillow, Lucinda says. Uh, but some other people are talking about um, Hope is making seven platypuses for seven grandkids from her late husband's ties. And on the bottom will be embroidering 
grandpa loves insert grandchild's name. So we've got some Thai projects that are coming well, in here. There's so many. I've seen, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like the ties, they go in a circle. And then like you applique it on somewhere. I've had a, a couple of people make pillows that I've seen with ties. Those are beautiful. If anyone can remember what that's called, you know what I'm talking about? Like it would be like this would be out like this and it would go. If you don't know what I'm saying, then it's totally okay. But look, look at how much fabric there is. That's so much more than I thought. Like I was so excited. That right there is. That's nine inches wide of fabric. That's a lot to play with. I, from the ties that I used, how many did I use? Did I say on the pattern? Eight. Out of eight neckties, I was able to make this one. And I have enough to make another one like this with those, which I'm going to demo in a bit. So that's two you can have matching. But then with the other end of the tie, like I just cut them into squares and did this. And this one's real cute. Like you got lots of material to work with. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a lot more than I thought. Dresden plate or Dresden Dresden plate. Block? Dresden plate. Our you viewers win are on the it today. prize. Oh you gosh, we win the prize we think the job. Thank you for that. I forgot yes. what it was. <laughs> I, I'm discovering the older I get, the more often this is going to happen where I forget things. I've explained this to my <laughs> daughter. She's not excited about it. But yeah, from here, and then there's other seams that you can open up. And they all seem to have the same, like whatever this length is, and then there's always a seam. So this I'll put aside for, for later for the squares and stuff. That's a lot. And pro tip for everyone out there. If you come upon a bag of ties that have been in your closet for a long time, before you get started sewing them, maybe wash them first. I made the mistake of not doing that. And I used to have cats and clearly a cat had um, done their business on the pile of ties. So when I began, I was having to um, figure out where that smell was coming from. And then I washed everything and it's okay. Like I didn't get sick or whatever, but um, make sure to wash it first because <laughs> Who knows what might be on your box of ties? That is a pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Big time pro tip. So now I'm going to show you how I cut these. Ha, Ruby. Oh, I can show y'all my dog in a bit if y'all wanted to see. But I'm not going to force my dog love on y'all. <laughs> I don't want to speak for our viewers, but I'm always down to see a dog on screen. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to cut it down the center. It doesn't even have to be exact. I'm going to guesstimate. I'm a big guesstimator whenever I do anything because, like, I don't know why not. But if you're a hundred percenter out there and everything being super crispy and perfect brings you joy, then have at it. You enjoy that. That does not bring me joy. Uh, we might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but I want to get this question in. Melissa's yeah. curious if you have to put fusible on the back of this as you're working. I did not. Okay. But then I'm new to all of this. So it's like, this was my first go. And then let me ponder that for a moment now that I've done it. No. No, you don't need that. It will help kind of like whenever you're sewing with Jersey, since it's a more flimsy material to stabilize it, you put the interfacing, maybe like a lightweight woven fusible, not mm -hmm. anything with a lot, just to give it a little bit more, more of a substance. But what I do wish that I would have done and I didn't do it was when I made, where did I put it? Oh, this one, I originally was going to quilt as you go as I did it. And for those that don't know that technique, essentially, like when I sew this seam, it would be on batting and then it would, it would stay there. And then I would go and just sew this seam, but also sew it to the batting. So each time that I go, it's already there. 
and that would have given it weight. So I wish that I would have done that as an option. But I would say for longevity, if this is going to be like something that's going to be cherished, then yeah, I would take the extra step just to give it a little bit more love to make sure that that it's going to hold tight because I can't guarantee this one is going to. I'd hope so, but I don't know what it's like to wash this kind of stuff regularly. Mm -hmm. But that was a great question. So this is enough. It's like, hey, like that. And then even from that, there's like all this left over. So let me show you how much is left. All of this. See, that's a lot. You can get a lot of squares out of that. Mm -hmm. And then so you'll have two sides. And if you're going to make a pair, like if you dig this style, then get all of the ones that are on the, the same side of the tie. Like this is the right, this is the left. Get all of the right ones and put those aside. And then all of the left ones, put those aside. Because you need the angles to, to match up and create a hole. And it won't if you don't um, account for that whenever you're doing it. Uh, now, Melody was curious, with that cut that you made, you're cutting with the bias, not the straight of grain? Oh, I don't ever think about that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, I just cut. So I think the fabric's on the bias, right? No. Yeah, it's cut on the bias, right? So yeah, it's on the bias. But I don't concern myself with with that kind of stuff, like the rules of of sewing. Um, if there's a piece of fabric and I want it to look a certain way, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it. And I don't care if I got on the bias, because especially with quilting, quilting will get rid of any mistakes or puckering, but just whenever you do that kind of stuff, you need to put something to reinforce it, like maybe paper or stabilizer. If you're um, uncomfortable with it or like a walking foot to sew with it, you'll be good to go. That awesome. was a great question. I love it. So are we ready to sew? I think so. Um, I am going to put one quick reminder in again, if you missed the very top of the hour and you're having trouble downloading the instructions, uh, one, you're not alone, but we do have a couple tips that have been working for some of our viewers. If you're having trouble downloading the instructions, try to open them in a different browser or maybe a private browser. And that has been fixing the issue for quite a few of our viewers. So give that a try and hopefully that will work for you. Uh, that reminder is all I had. So if if it's ready to sew time, we're going to send it right back to Matthew. It's ready to sew, ready to sew time. It's ready to sew time. So this is what I was talking about, how they both need to like have the angle the same way. Because then now I'm going to take them to where now they're, um, they're snuggling this way. And then I'm going to sew it. So basically the short end goes against one of the wide ends. And then you do the opposite when you go and I think I'm probably using a half inch seam allowance I probably accounted for it in the, the thing but why I never know because I always just use the edge of my foot to measure because I know that I'll be able to see it that's another pro tip instead of trying to fidget and, and make sure that it's perfectly like a, a half inch I, it's, it's close enough to me but this way I can make sure that it's straight Oh, I also have a new machine. I was gonna ask. Yeah, I haven't named I haven't named this one yet, and I really love it. Yeah, I've started doing some work with them. They're a great company, um, aligned to my values and stuff too. But yeah, it's a nice little machine. I'll probably end up giving it to Helena, but if y'all can think of a name, let me put it. Y'all, y'all name, name Ooh. him. He's a him. Name him. All put right, let's get. Let's get some suggestions in while we're yeah. doing some sewing today. Yeah. See? And look how cute it is. See? Look at that seam. Look at that. That's some like pro level sewing, right? I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll do one more set for you. And another option, like what I did for that one, instead of cutting them before, just let it go and like prepare for two pillows. Where do we go? This is it. So this is a long one. 
So what other kind of projects happened this week? What all, what all did y'all make? Oh, well, we started the week with uh, what's called Plarn. So using plastic bags to make yarn. And then we crocheted and knitted with that material. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was uh, quite fun and impressive, especially we got to do both of those projects kind of side by side. And That's then, super uh, cool. Yesterday, we busted out some denim, which is also in the comments. A couple people have mentioned using old jeans. So we got to quilt with uh, some old denim hanging out. And much like the ties, it was kind of impressive when you take a pair of jeans apart, just how There's much fabric so you much have. Fabric. That's actually yeah. my first project when I got into quilting because I was an apparel sewist when I started for the first few years for me and my kid. And then part of my process to learn how to sew apparel was to like deconstruct my old pants that I would never fit into. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm never going to be a size 32 waist. I, at 6'3", I should never be that. So I, I seam ripped. And then I had a big stack of jeans and I was like, I need to upcycle or do something. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so I need to be granola. So I decided to make a quilt. I'd never made a quilt before. I just did it. I didn't even know it was called a string block. And wow, that's, that's a sturdy quilt. It's really a good, like, winter kind of quilt. I loved that project. It, it was really nice to see how that all came together. So we did a smaller yeah. one. Colleen put it together uh, for the curb when you're watching a parade, something like that. So it takes a little bit of the heaviness out because it's not quite as large as your basic <laughs> quilt would be. It's a little narrower to be just running along the curb. Uh, so that was one way to make sure you could carry around all of that denim once it's right. put together. <laughs> but there's like, and I've made, um, cause I was, I did a lot of upcycling when I first started. Um, and I, out of khakis, I made like a messenger bag and then I made a diaper bag out of some other pants because they already had the pockets in them. So it's like, I don't have to sew the pockets. So they were there already. And it was just like, oh, this is cool. Brilliant. All right. I am going to drop in a little tip here. We've got a couple viewers, specifically um, Gail here, talking about washing ties. Uh, you want to be careful with the silk. Uh, she says, dry clean them or wash them on the gentle cycle and hang them to dry. That way you won't damage the fabric if you're washing a lot. So that tip has come in from one of our viewers. Thank you. Whatever you do, just make sure to get the cat stuff out of it before you start sewing with it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but so like this one, I would then like cut it in half and I'd have one for one pillow and one for another pillow. And then look what I did. Hold on. Oh, hey, hold on. Let's do that. I'll do a transition. So you have to pause it and a magic and it's like ta-da look what i did <laughs> that was so fast i know right it's like i was ready so now i'm going to create an envelope pillow which is just a pillow that everyone should know how to do it's just lovely even if y'all haven't sewn before everyone you can make an envelope pillow. And even if this doesn't, like, if this is not your vibe, like this tie, if you look at this and you're like, you know what, Matthew, most of your projects are pretty awesome, but this one, no thank you. Then you can just get a piece of um, a fabric and use like a single sheet of fabric and then um, still do the envelope pillow. But um, it's okay if that's how you feel because not everyone has good taste because this is really good looking. <laughs> Ooh, we got our first name suggestion for your consideration. Uh, Andrea says, with your daughter's name being Helena, perhaps your new sewing machine should be named Henry and go on a little H theme. I do not Add it to the that. list. I do not, I do not dislike this, this suggestion. I actually enjoy that suggestion. I will keep that on my brain. Ruby, I need to get over here. Oh, uh, let's show you the dog. Come here, baby. <laughs> <gasps> Look at this assistant. Wow. Oh my. Oh. Yeah. You're like, what? What's up? You? She's my friend. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. so fantastic. Go back to bed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. Is this enough? Yeah. Hold on. I'm finding the right fabric. I didn't think about this part. So when you're doing an envelope pillow, you yeah. need enough fabric to be large enough, right? I'm assuming. Yep. yep. 
Okay, found it. So you'll need any size. I have the dimensions in here, but like whenever I'm creating the overlap, because essentially you put one part of it down and then you put the other part down and the seams don't butt up against each other. You want about four inches ah. from one beginning to the other beginning. And then that will help you mm -hmm. avoid like the plumber's crack in a pillow in the back. You don't want that to happen. So this is one way to avoid that. That was a nice way to describe that, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Visuals always help. You know, yeah. <gasps> okay. Oh, we've got a second suggestion. We're just going to have to make a list for you here for the names. So Marlon from the UK via Denmark is uh, suggesting how about calling it Hemingway, Hemingway, pun intended. <laughs> I support this one too. Wow, y'all are, Yo, are really going deep with this. Y'all are coming up with some great, great suggestions. Do I like them both? I know, <laughs> you're gonna have a, a tough decision to make. I Yeah, clearly. So now I am just taking the fabric and I'm making sure it's, it's the right width. It's always better to cut it a little bit wider than you expect than a little bit under because you can't like add fabric once it's gone. And then now for here. Hi, sweetheart. I know we're usually snuggling right now. Press this. Uh, Liz actually wants to know, is she a Springer Spaniel? She's not. She's an Australian Labradoodle, but she's small. Her mom was small, so um, she got her mom's size. She's like 40 pounds, so she looks like it, but no. Are we ready? Oh, wait. Hold on. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. <laughs> so while it is heating up, so I am going to, on one of the longer ends, fold it and press like this. And then fold it and press again. Like so, it's higher. And that will create a nice, nice seam. So I'm folding it over about a half inch. And then for this one, since I have a lot of fabric, I'm gonna fold it over like an inch. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. See like that? And whenever I sew this kind of a hem, I genu generally will make sure that I have the same thread in the bobbin as the top thread because I sew it from the back along this line. And so it's basically going to have the bobbin thread exposed. So you want to make sure that you account for that if you use this technique. Yes. Hey, Hemingway, how you doing, Hemingway? How you doing, Henry? Hmm. Got to test it out. You have see to. What, see what fits. Okay. And then, see, this is the front. That's the back. And why I do it from the back instead of from the front is, since I do guess a lot and I'm not a perfectionist, that way I don't, accidentally miss some of it because I found whenever I would do it from the, the front there was always some section where the needle wouldn't catch it and I would not be satisfied so that's that's another pro tip for me I basically come up with a lot of tips to um shorten the amount of time it takes to make something and that's the benefit that's of not learning from my mom I learned on my own and through the wonderful internet community so I learned it all different. I love it. I think that's really great too, because boy, if you're just starting out with something or just trying a project for the first time and you have this expectation that it has to be 100% perfect, you might stall out a bit halfway through. That's this how my, that's how my daughter Helena is. And I don't know how to, I don't know how y'all help me. Okay. Help me out in the comments. So my kid, 
love her. She's amazing. Anyone who's ever like witnessed her knows that how fabulous she is, but she's very much about wanting to like do something. And then she wants it to be excellent. And I'm trying to impress that she needs to like study and it takes time to get there, but I don't want to say what she's doing isn't cute, but um, I'm at a standstill with that. So how do you, how do you encourage and make it a realistic thing without discouraging them from it? Like all, all at the same time. It's very complicated. This parenting thing is. Ooh, <laughs> I'm trying to think because I personally am much more a perfectionist as well, but I learned later in life how to let some of that go. And for me, it's about the process. If I can focus more on enjoying the process and treating that as, you know, the end goal in and of itself, I can let go more of my need for the finished product to be a hundred percent because I've gotten because, something out. Because the payoff isn't, isn't the end for you. The payoff is yeah. the whole experience. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that would uh, apply. It might, it's a... it might. And like, I try to tell her, I'm like, you know what, sweetheart? That's beautiful. I love it. Oh my God. It's the most amazing flower. But how about you just do it for you? And she's like, mm -mm. I want to show you. <laughs> oh, we got another question that popped in about washing. Um, I'm going to assume this one. It comes in from Sue since it came in at this point probably about when everything's put together. So when you have this all constructed and you want to wash it, I think you said that you hadn't thought about multiple washes, but in general, what would you suggest for washing this? Delicate. Okay. Because I'm supposed to suggest that. <laughs> well me, done. me, myself and I, I will probably wash it on a regular load. Like I do everything else. Um, cause I'm pretty confident in the seams and it not falling apart, but I might be wrong, but I just figure it's upcycling. This has been through the ringer. The things that these, the, the stories, these ties have to tell, like if they can survive all that, then I'm thinking they can survive a washing machine. But if you don't know, then of course do what you're supposed to do and like dry clean it or hand wash on delicate. Yeah. But I support whatever decision you make. So now we have two of these. And so lay down the top first, like so. And then lay down the bottom like this. So that it's like this. Can you see the seam? Yeah, you can Ooh. overlap it. Do you like that? Woo! Woo! Like that. So it's overlapping. And then now just sew around the perimeter. That's all we got to do. If you want to clip it or pin it, go for it. I like to um, live on the wild side. Woo! <laughs> I'm, so <laughs> <angry. laughs> I'm so glad that I fell at the same time that I said that. So. But yeah, we're ready. Is everyone having fun? Is it a party? Oh. It's Thursday, right? I'm just starting to pop through some of these comments because we've had just a lot of people sharing some of their thoughts, lots of where they found their ties at thrift stores, collecting from family and friends. Uh, Liz even shared her own pets that she's got. So she's got two birds, a cockatiel named Zuni, a green Quaker parrot named Alvin, and Kitty's name oh, is Annie. So we've got lots. Oh, and Carol has a question. Do you have Grover in your sewing room? What was the question? Is Grover in your sewing room? Grover is, but he's on. I'll show, I will do this for y'all since you asked. Grover is traveling with um, a version of myself on Falcor. So he's up there having fun, going on a little trip. Um, that's his, that's his space. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin his fun. So I'm going to leave him there. <laughs> yes, He has a prominent space. Cause I remember one time I was doing one of these and I couldn't find Grover. And I just felt like such a horrible, like Grover lover. Cause you're not supposed to treat Grover like that. Grover is special. It must be protected. That's just a fact. <laughs> I love it. Y'all remember that kind of stuff. That's so funny. Well, we also have uh, some of your TikTok followers are here. So Jessica says she follows you on TikTok. 
Um, if you want to talk a little bit about where people can find you on social media for people that haven't already found you, where can they see you? Yeah, I'm everywhere. Except the, the Twitter. I don't understand the Twitter. I just haven't figured that out yet. And it sounds like Elon Musk is going to like buy it anyway and change it. So it's okay if I don't. But um, Facebook, uh, Facebook group and Facebook page, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube are my main places. I'm Mr. Domestic everywhere. M-I-S-T-E-R and then domestic because if you do the um, M-R domestic, then you might find a cat. And um, that's not me though. So I'm human. In case you didn't, <laughs> didn't know. <laughs> oh, and we've and, got another um, you, can, you can find my website, mrdomestic.com. I have an, uh, um, like a sewing school. It's called Sew You if you wanted to check me out there. Um, but the main place where I engage a lot is the TikTok. I do a lot over on the TikTok because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Like I have fun over there. It's just being, it's about being silly and I love it. We've got another H name suggestion. This one comes from Diane. So we're going to add to your list. What do you think about Herbie? If you want to try Herbie. Herbie. Mm hmm Hey, Herbie. How you doing? How you doing, Herbie? Herbie. Herbie. I told you not to do that. That's cute. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not erasing that yet. That's cute. <laughs> okay. We're almost to a pillow. So just so y'all can see what I did, look. I sew two ends together, and that's how I avoid pinning. And then now I'm gonna sew up the the sides and then it'll work out it's fine is anyone nervous that i'm not using pins and stuff i usually make a couple people anxious by my techniques <laughs> we'll see i do uh, we've got a couple comments that have just come in Trish, trisha is excited about all the joy that you bring to your projects and Irma says that she and her granddaughter always love the project's right. ideas and your teaching, and they watch them together. So oh, we got a couple votes. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> that, oh, that just warms my heart. I love Mr. Domestic bringing families together. Indeed. Ooh. And we did have a question here, a little bit more uh, technique oriented. Um, Dorothy asks, what type of interfacing would you use? We talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but now that we're into the project, what would you think about if you used any? Yeah, so the interfacing that I always have on hand is, is Pelon SF-101. Because I do a lot mm -hmm. of weaving and then you can use that one with apparel. So if I had that one on hand, I would use that. Definitely for this, I would use a woven. Um, with interfacing, there's woven and then non-woven and the non-woven, it kind of feels like paper and it doesn't have a lot of gill. So it might, might take some of the, like the plushiness away from it. So my suggestion would be to either use, uh, like a lightweight woven interfacing or do this without the interfacing and then put a sheet of like the Pelon SF 101 and then just fuse it to the back and then you'll be good to go there. But definitely make sure it's a woven and not too heavy. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm one seam away from a pillow. Ooh. Are we ready? That means it's the last call. If you have any questions that you'd like to get in about this project, probably drop them in now. Okay, I had to rip that seam, so I'm two seams away, but let's do it. <laughs> Just so y'all know what happened here, because I'm sewing a firmer fabric to a slippery fabric, and I had the firm fabric on top, and the slippery fabric, since I didn't pin it, it shimmied out of the way. So to make sure this doesn't happen, I'm going to put the, the shiny fabric on top so I can maneuver that, if that makes sense. Mm hmm. Ooh, and while you're sewing, try out this next name suggestion. Uh, Beth thinks it looks like there's a hawk image on the machine. So what about Hawkins? Hawkins. Mm hmm. Hey, Hawkins. My daughter's just gonna. This is gonna touch her heart that y'all are thinking about all these H things for her. Like really. <laughs> 
like once she's of age and an adult and she does all of this stuff, y'all will forget about me. You'll just be about her. I get it. It's okay. It's okay. It's still, it's the legacy, passing it on. Yes. Okay, one more. She likes to tell me what she will do with Mr. Domestic if she chooses to take it over. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, baby, you can have it all. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fun to do that. Okay. Woo! Okay, so you know how I didn't use pins and clips and stuff? Don't do that. Make sure to use pins and clips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So it turns out you're making yourself a little anxious by not using the pins yes. and clips today. Because I'm like, this stuff is slipping. That doesn't work. Okay, and then just turn it inside out or right side out. Oh, oh. Ruby, where's my pillow form? Do you know where it is? Oh, I know it. I had a pillow form, but I used the stuffing for um, an amigurumi that I used, so I don't have that anymore. But I'll show you this. And then before I attach it, then I would press everything, but then now you got a pillow. See? It's a pillow. It's a yeah. pillow. And then this is the back. And then you can insert it into the back, the pillow form. And then, ta-da, you don't know how to do snaps. You don't need to know how to do a zipper. You can turn anything into a pillow. This is also a great technique for like um, another upcycling situation. Like if you have a t-shirt, like let's say um, I grew even more and this didn't fit me anymore. Then I could cut a square out of this and attach interfacing because I love this. This is the asexual pride um, color. I identify as that for those that didn't know. But then you could do an envelope pillow for that. So it's another kind of keepsake upcycling situation that you can do. Just make sure to use interfacing for that. Look. Now, I, I did it. Had... <laughs> Do y'all have questions? Huh? Well, I have one. Uh -huh. um, while we're talking upcycling, when you're stuffing a pillow, would that perhaps be an opportunity to grab scraps or other things you could just kind of jam in there? That's um, my, my smaller scraps I save for that. And okay. sometimes I mix it in with stuffing that I have just so it's it's full. And then I crochet and do all of my yarn crafts. And anytime there's a tangle, I don't want to deal with it. Anytime, any extra spare. If it's really not a lot of yarn, I put it in a vase. And then when that fills up, I will use that as stuffing. Or like if I'm doing an amigurumi that's smaller and I don't want the white to poke through, then I'll go find some of the scraps of that color and put it on the inside. But yeah, they don't need to. There's one. I have a spider up there that I, half of it is stuffed with underwear. No one needed to know that, but that's what's inside of it. Anything, <laughs> anything you can stuff it with. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, all right. No final questions about the project have come in, but that's great because this is an easy. It's an easy. Just make sure to think more about upcycling. It's super duper important. Like. Most of us, we have enough stuff. And even if you can just upcycle one or two things, that would be, I mean, it's cool. It's fun. Let's do it together. Absolutely. So I'm going to give you the floor for one final moment. Uh, if there's any words of inspiration or anything you want to leave us with a challenge, project-wise, life-wise, you let us know. And then I'll finish us off with some reminders. So you first, Matthew. So I love that we did an Earth Day event my kid wow she makes sure that i have this top of mind all of the time she is the reason we got solar panels on our house like she's really and we're gonna have a compost like there are things that you can do and i know that the impact of what we do it might seem or feel like it's not not making a difference so why bother doing anything who cares rada 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 and I'm going to tell you to stop thinking like that. 
like, cause you're manifesting it. Stop thinking like that. If we all like made a couple differences in our lives, like that's what I challenge you with. Not necessarily a sewing project, but find two opportunities in your life this week where you can make a choice to either upcycle or not get something or um, do something for the environment. It could be you find some clothes that you want to cut up and turn into something. I will, I will take that. But I expect in a week to look in these comments and I expect to see some things in there. I'm just letting you know because it's important and it's fun and it just adds another level of awesome to a project because not only does it have the history of you creating it and knowing what you were doing there it has the history of the textile and the garment and boy does that make it pretty special i think so thanks for having me i always love doing this uh i agree uh i also want to give a hashtag for people to use so if you're making today's project any of the projects from this week or i would even add any upcycling projects that you are inspired by this week mm. for. Go ahead and use the hashtag ShareCraftsy. We want to see what it is that the community is coming up with and working on. So again, that hashtag is ShareCraftsy. And we've got one final day of upcycling projects for you. That will be tomorrow. And we're going to be streaming live with Emily Steffen. We're going to start at 2 p.m. Central Time. And Emily is going to be providing a live demonstration on how to use old ceramic plates and cups to make a beautiful mosaic pot. So you can download your free instructions right now using the link in the description before tomorrow's event. Quick reminder, if you're having trouble, use that other browser or a private window, and you can find the entire mini series schedule in the video description as well. So we have to say thank you again to Matthew, and on behalf of the entire team, my name is Leah. Until we see you the next time, happy crafting.